स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट जियोग्रफी चैप्टर नंबर थ्री ऑफ क्लास सेवेंथ दैट इज द चेंजिंग अर्थ सो वेन एवर वी थिंक अबाउट अवर अर्थ वी फील दैट वी हैव सो एंड सो कॉन्टिनेंट सो एंड सो ओशन एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल सिंस सम थाउजेंड्स ऑफ इयर्स अगो ऑन वर्ड्स वॉट वी बिलीव इज दैट वी से दैट दिस कॉन्टिनेंट्स आर फिक्स फ्रॉम द बिगनिंग ऑफ दिस अर्थ और दिस ओशन हैव ऑरिजिनेटेड फ्रॉम दिस बिगनिंग ऑफ दिस अर्थ बट द जर्मन साइंटिस्ट what he tried to do is that he tried to explain how this continents were distributed so in the year 1912 a german meteorologist his name is alfred wegener what he tried to do is that he tried to explain how this present day distribution of continents were occurred how these continents have been distributed whether they are there from the beginning or they are actually separated so these things he tried to explain in his theory so let us see what he proposed what is the theory he proposed so what he says is that about 250 million years ago there was only one and only supercontinent on this earth according to alfred wegener what he said is that almost about 250 years ago we have 250 million years ago we have one and only supercontinent on this earth and that supercontinent he he named it as this pangea and this supercontinent later on it has been slowly divided and separated and formed into different different continents so in detail we will see what he proposed and the name of the theory which he proposed we call it as this continental drift theory so let us see what this continental drift theory says about our continents so this wegener's theory again it was further improved by something known as this idea of sea floor spreading sea floor spreading means uh, the floor of the sea which always moves according to this theory the sleaf, uh, sea floor will be moving so by adding to wegener's theory we have also added the, uh, we have added this theory known as sea floor spreading and this concept is together we call it as something known as this uh, plate tectonics and this plate tectonics what it says is that it says some of the very important features about this theory so what are these is that the first one is that the earth's crust it consists of plates known as lithospheric plates or tectonic plates as you all know that the earth is when it we when we see the earth it has been divided inside the earth into three different layers as you all know there one is a crust mantle as well as core so the top layer of the earth that is crust it has been divided into different different plates and these plates we call them as this lithospheric plates sometimes we may also call them as this tectonic plates so this is the first important thing which is which has given by this theory known as plate tectonics then the second one is that there are six major and 20 minor plates which always move continuously so this is the second very important thing so total six major plates are there then 20 minor plates are there so as you see suppose if this is globe again you can see that different different plates are divided like this of this uh, entire earth so like this there are total six major plates are there and 20 minor plates are there then as one more very important thing is that these plates they move continuously but the rate of movement of the plates is extremely slow extremely slow in the sense they'll be moving but in a very very slow manner these plates are moving such a slow manner is that very few millimeters they move in a year that means one when we complete one year at each year they move a very very few millimeters that means you see how much slowly these plates are moving then we'll also see other features of this plate tectonic theory feature of this tectonic theory is that the tectonic activities such as earthquakes and volcanoes along the plate boundaries there occurred basically where they occur is that they will occur basically on the plate margins that means plate margins means as i told this plates are uh, earth is divided into different different plates so this tecton tectonic activities such as earthquakes volcanoes or any other natural uh, forces such as tsunami where they mainly occur is that they mainly occur on this plate margins that means on the boundaries of these plates and why this tectonic activities occur is that because as i told the plates they move continuously and 
the movement of these plates causes various changes on the earth surface not only these tectonic activities it also creates various changes on this earth surface so why these plates create various changes is that because these plates are moving and why these plates are moving is that these plates are moving because there are some of the forces which are acting upon them because of those forces these plates are moving and what are these forces are that they are mainly divided into two different types one is endogenic forces the second one is exogenic forces endogenic forces means those forces which occur inside the earth endo means inside so those forces which occur deep inside the earth we call them as this endogenic forces and exogenic means outside those forces which occur on the surface of the earth we call them as this exogenic forces and these endogenic forces which occur deep inside the earth can produce sudden movements sometimes they may produce sudden movements and sometimes they may produce a slow movements and sometimes they may produce both slow as well as sudden movements and these forces also causes some of the vertical as well as horizontal movements of these plates those forces which occur deep inside this earth as we call them as endogenic forces so these endogenic forces may create sudden movements slow movements or both the movements sometimes they may also create this vertical or horizontal movement of these plates so let us see in detail how what kind of movements can be caused by these forces so as i told there are mainly two different types of forces endogenic as well as exogenic this exogenic uh, sorry endogenic they may again cause sudden as well as diastrophic movements so when the when the sudden movements occur it causes earthquakes landslides as well as volcanoes then these diastrophic movements it may cause this something known as this mountain building that means uh, the mountains may be formed because of this diastrophic movements and whereas this exogenic movements means exogenic forces means these forces basically we call them as this erosional and depositional activity erosion means wearing away of the top layer of the soil and deposition means all these whatever is eroded by the water or anything will be deposited in a particular place and how these activities are done is that how these exogenic forces are occurred is that by rivers by wind by glaciers by sea waves so these are some of the forces which cause this exogenic movements which may create erosional as well as depositional activities so next we will see about this volcanoes very eager to know about what are these volcanoes how they erupt what are what are the main what are the main reasons why these volcanoes erupt so let us now see about this volcanoes so in the past volcanoes were actually known as a something known as this mountain of fire why they are known as this mountain of fire is because from the mountain the fire used to erupt or the lava used to come out so therefore people used to call something it as known as this mountain of fire but in reality it is not actually a mountain it is a circular opening through which a hot molten material erupts it is a circular op- uh, what is that it is a circular opening through which a molten magma erupts it is not actually a mountain but in the past when people were not aware of all these things they used to think that it is something like a mountain of fire or it is a mountain but in reality actually it is a circular opening that means you see this circular opening through this circular opening through which this molten magma erupts or molten magma comes out so this circular opening we call it as this vent so from here to here you see there is a circular vent which is opening from the down to this upward region through this only this molten magma erupts from inside the earth you see this region is known as this magma region or magma chamber which is very hot and uh, it is uh, burn, uh, boiling like anything and it comes out onto the earth surface by a circular opening which we call it as this vent in sometimes it is not in the form of a circular opening but it may be simply a crack so that which that crack we may call them as this fissure so it is not a, it is not only we cannot say that it is exactly a circular opening it can be sometimes a crack in the mountain so that crack we may call it as this fissure and the opening from which 
this uh, lava comes out uh, we call it as this crater this one we call it as this crater and this thing can be sometimes it may be in the form of steam gas or dust and very important thing is that when it is inside the earth we call it as this uh, magma and when it comes out in the form of a liquid or anything we call it as this lava and there are different different types of volcanoes are there we will we will see about this different types of volcanoes let us discuss about different types of volcanoes there are mainly three different types of volcanoes are there there are active volcanoes dormant volcanoes as well as extinct volcanoes so now in detail we will see about what are these active volcanoes what are these dormant volcanoes as well as what are these extinct volcanoes so first let us discuss about this active volcanoes active volcanoes are those volcanoes which erupt frequently that means those volcanoes which occur frequently we can we may not be knowing when they will occur maybe today tomorrow or after a month but most frequently these volcanoes will be occurring that is the first feature then because they of because of their continuity we may also call them as they are they are also known as this living volcanoes why because they are occurring very frequently and examples of these active volcanoes you can take there is a place known as tramboli and etna these are the places these are, which are uh, located in italy which are the best examples for this active volcanoes then the second type of volcanoes they are dormant volcanoes dormant volcanoes means those volcanoes once they have occurred means they will become quiet after occurring that means once uh, if there is a volcano somewhere if it is quiet after uh, coming we may call them as this dormant volcanoes that's why we see here they have become quiet after erupting once they erupt they will be very quiet and they do not show any indication of eruption in near future that means uh, they will never show any kind of indication or any kind of uh, signal saying that they may occur in near future and these volcanoes are also known as this sleeping volcanoes since they do not show any indication that in near future whether they will occur or not mostly they will not occur because of that we call them as this sleeping volcanoes and the best example is again it is uh, there is a place known as vesuvius which is located in italy this is the best example for this dormant volcanoes then the third type of volcanoes they are extinct volcanoes what are these extinct volcanoes are that those volcanoes which have not erupted for hundred hundreds of years that means uh, maybe somewhere ago somewhere in the uh, 100 years back or 150 years back uh, volcanoes might have occurred and since then to till now if any kind of volcanoes are not erupted from that place means from that mountain means we call them as this extinct volcanoes you see sometimes we call extinct animals which are long back existed but now they are not existing now so that type of volcanoes we call them as this extinct volcanoes and there is no possibility of eruption in future that means there is not even a possibility that they will again occur in future they will never occur in the future that is why they are known as this extinct volcanoes and these volcanoes they are also known with other name that is they are also known as this uh, dead volcanoes and examples are this you very famous place kilimanjaro in africa as well as rainier in usa so these are the different types of volcanoes again if you see they are active volcanoes dormant volcanoes as well as extinct volcanoes let us discuss about this the other topic in the volcanoes that is about this distribution of volcanoes how this vol uh, volcanoes are distributed and uh, throughout the world or on the globe so let us see so this most of the world's active volcanoes as i just now mentioned about this active volcanoes they form a circular belt around this pacific ocean all those active volcanoes most of the world's active volcanoes they form a circular belt around this pacific ocean that is why this belt is known as this pacific ring of fire whatever the active volcanoes that are forming a circular belt around this pacific ocean we call them as this pacific ring of fire then after that the second belt of volcanoes is found along this uh, sea known as this mediterranean sea which is in between this uh, northern part of africa as well as below this uh, europe so in between these 
there is a sea known as Mediterranean Sea. So here you can find the second belt of volcanoes. That's why this, since they are found in this Mediterranean Sea, we call them as this mid-walled mountain belt. Just now as I mentioned about this, uh, most of the volcanoes, when we discussed about types of volcanoes in that, we have seen that most of the volcanoes they are found in Italy. So that Italy is somewhat very closer to this Mediterranean Sea. So that is why this place or this uh, second belt of volcanoes, they are known as this mid-walled mountain belt. And one of the world's most beautiful volcanic mountain you can find in Japan which is also known as this Mount Fujiyama which we call it as one of the world's most beautiful volcanic mountain. So th with this we have completed about this distribution of volcanoes and we have completed about this uh, the topic of volcanoes. In the next video we will discuss about this earthquakes. Thank you.